guys, gals, and non-binary pals, welcome to Bananas, the silliest little news podcast that there ever once was. This is uh, one of your hosts, Kurt Brownoller. This is Banana Boy number two, Scotty Landis. We are so glad to have you listening to us, Bananas. We're just going to laugh and laugh and laugh. I can feel it coming today. Oh, I can feel it too. There have been requests, Scotty. There have been requests. That, you? that you have to drop Banana Boy number two, because there is no Banana Boy number one. You are. No, I am not. I have refused the title from the beginning of this podcast. Mm. Well, I, it I does, just, it rolls I just off like the being tongue. second banana. It's fine. Um, <laughs> let's bring Your second our guest. banana to nothingness. Yes, well, before we, bring up, before we bring up our guest, I just have a few things to say. Guys, still Denver taping, special taping, August 29th, uh, early show. Is sold out. Late show. We need you in those That's seats the for the late show. And I've got two more shows added in Los Angeles just to prep for uh, the taping. August 25th at the Dynasty Typewriter. August 26th at Cine Lounge. Cine Lounge is going to be a very intimate 60-person theater. And Dynasty Typewriter is going to be a beautiful theater where it's, everybody has to be vaccinated or uh, have proof of a negative COVID test. So come on out. That sounds fun. Ticket links in bio on the Instagram. Are you guys ready for this fantastic guest, this powerhouse of a guest? I know her well. Oh, I know you do. Our guest today is a true mm. multi-hyphenate. Scotty, do you like a multi-hyphenate? More than anything in my whole life. God damn, I love a multi-hyphenate. She's a musician, actress, yes. comedian, filmmaker, writer. We knew her originally from the comedy collective Variety Shack back in the day. That's She's true. She's also the leader of the indie rock band Tigers and Monkeys, who are so very good. Yes. And she currently co-hosts her own live variety show podcast called We Don't Even Know. Please welcome mm. Shanali Bomick. Mm. Hi. Oh my God, I can't Got believe her. I get to be with you guys uh, in oh, yeah. this summer hot day, and I oh, get yes. to laugh my ass off with the two of you. I'm so happy. Seriously, I've been waiting. He, oh, the Scotty joy knows. is ours. Yeah, I mean, the pleasure I, is ours. I've been texting you guys nonstop about this big day. Here we yeah. are. <laughs> I'm on bananas. It's bananas. It's all come to this. It's oh. all come to this. So good to see your face. I love wow. seeing your face. I miss your laughs. You know, both of you have one of a kind laughs. So oh. bring it. Let's Vice do versa. this. Vice versa. Uh, yeah. Um, how you doing? How's your summer? How's your Guys, week? You okay? I'm good today. <laughs> Today's good. <laughs> that's, as much of, that's as far as we can go at this point. Keep it day by day. Man, I feel like I've spent a lot of this pandemic helping friends yep. from not unraveling. You know, oh I think yep. you got that uh, right. Right, and uh, I feel somewhat lucky, if not very. Um, uh, I have gratitude for the fact. That I am one with this nonsense in terms of like we got it, we can do this. We're gonna yes. get through this. Yes, you have always been wildly um, optimistic person, infectiously right. optimistic, Thank and you. positive. A very Thank pleasant you. person to be around. <laughs> it's true. Everybody that knows her loves her. It's true. Yep. Right. Well, I, I just guess, and if for all of you listening out there, <laughs> if you are unraveling, I just want you to know that it is not your fault that we have this pandemic. That's right. It is not personal, and don't be so hard on yourself. And we got like, let's just yep. keep keep the laughing going. That's what we got. That's, right. That's all we got, yep. pretty much. Oh yeah, <laughs> we are we are functioning at a Garth Brooks level of optimism right now. It is extremely I love Garth. positive. I love Garth, and you know I'm from Nashville. He's beloved in my hometown. So oh yeah, yeah. oh I love yeah. Him. Is his alter ego beloved? Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. Now, Does pe do people love Chris? <laughs> that was problematic. Circles. I did. <laughs> I thought it was hysterical. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> was it too. Winky? Was it? Do you think was it Winky Winky or was it just like this is going to be his like dark side? Uh, I don't. I, I. You know what? Now knowing more about him, I feel like I got to know him better during this pandemic. He did so Me too. many. Like he did really documentaries great, and yeah, yeah. he donated. Yeah. yeah, and uh, now I think maybe it's Winky Winky. Back then, I did not. 
Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like cool. Yeah. All right, um, Curry. Do you, got, do you want to hear about the second hear. most talented man in the world? <laughs> oh, I thought it was Garth a woman. Brooks. Wait. No. Oh, it is a man. suction head McGee or whatever? Let's do it. Yeah. That. <laughs> and I, you know what? I left one of these words out because the title is a, such a mishmash of words where it just keeps going. And you're like, which? What is the? What? Because the actual title, because it's from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. They're good. Uh-huh. Sent in by the wonderful Lily Lynn on oh, Instagram. She is Lily. awesome. Uh, written by Elena Weissman. So thank you, Elena. Elena's the best the, in the business. Absolutely can, best in the business. She can type out some words. Uh, the actual title is Meet Kenosha's Jamie Canhead Keaton, the Human Suction Cup. <laughs> so oh. it's even like the, when I first read it, I was like, I'm trying to fit. What does it mean? Okay, here it is. You've got. I. It's, it's amazing. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. So I'm the scared. photograph that you see, and we will post this on the Instagram. The photograph you see is a man. Um, he has a he has a perfectly manicured, almost looks like it's been drawn on mm. with a marker, mustache, oh. and goatee, with very Ooh. long lines. It's very Ooh. intensely uh, okay. manicured. Okay. Okay. He is a bald man. He has a bald bald man with multiple earrings in both ears, and then he has one, two, three, four. Cans just stuck to his head. <laughs> um, two beer cans, one Fiji water bottle, and then a jar of peanut butter on the back. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> um, okay. So and then, this is amazing. I didn't even realize this. Underneath the photograph is this description. Jamie Canhead Keaton mm-hmm. <laughs> has a rare skin condition <laughs> oh that causes objects to stick to his skin. <laughs> that is. So here we go. Okay. We're here to get into this. I'm enticed. Me, I've been Milwaukee enticed. Journal Sentinel. I'm very enticed. It all started when he was seven years old. Quote, my toys started sticking to me, Jamie Keaton said. My parents, they thought it was the pine sap from the trees mm. and told me not to worry about it. Keaton took their advice and ignored his stickiness for two decades. Whoa. But then something happened that he couldn't brush off, literally. Oh, yes, Elena. She's good. Yes, Elena Weissman. She's good. Yeah. Now. Quote. Yes. Question. How quickly. I don't know how recent you read that story, but right off the right off the gate. Right. We all can stick things to our skin. Right. Isn't that like well, a thing? So, like paper. Like. Like, I don't think I could stick I mean, a, can a can to me. I, I mean, <laughs> no, um, try. What, what try, and stick, try and stick a half full bottle wa- bottle of Fuji water on your okay. head. Okay, so that's what, he's, what he's doing. Okay, it's got okay. water. It's, not it's got water empty. in it. No, not happening. Not, not happening. an empty can. Mm-hmm. No, this is a full can. Do you guys this rem- is, do you remember when the woman? There was a woman that went into court to complain about vaccines, and she said that there was some kind of chemical that caused um, your, like, things to stick. So she took, like, I feel like magnetic made you magnetic. Yeah, 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 magnetic. Thank you. Do you remember that? And everything started falling off. (laughs) You never know these days. You um, never know. So this is when he first realized it. He was, quote, I was at a ball game drinking soda pop when suddenly I reached up to catch a stray ball. After that, I looked around and was like, where's my drink? Keaton said, and then realized the can was stuck to the back of my head. It was stuck so hard that it took five (laughs) minutes to pull off. (laughs) All right, here we go. Did he catch the ball? Uh, I don't know. He made the ball. <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> and so, this is how many years ago? Like, how is this, this not? Is, this is many years ago. This is right. probably, I think, ten years ago. Right. And we're um, just now hearing about this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't That's even know why is for. we're just. I know exactly. <laughs> Um, so that after that episode of the ball game, that's when Keaton finally decided to see a doctor about his condition. Okay. Uh, to his first appointment, he wore a can of peanuts on his head for demonstration purposes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a showman. He's a showman. <laughs> Oh, boy. I cannot take this. This man could be making so much money right now. And I think he is. I think he is. I think that's why we know about him. Okay. I see. Um, so... 
my doctor goes, how do you do that? And I said, well, that's what I'm here to find out. Mm -hmm. Uh, He didn't find out that day, but his appointment did lead to a series of doctor's visits and tests all over the Midwest. According to Keaton, these tests indicated his skin sucked in more oxygen than the average humans, causing his body to act like something of a human glue stick. So wow. the porous objects, anything from cans and water bottles to pencils and cell phones, touch his bare skin. They suction cup on as if held by a magnetic force. The strained condition earned Keaton his nickname, Canhead. I, I'm getting, guessing he gave that to himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so human skin normally absorbs a small amount of oxygen in order to sustain the uppermost layer of skin cells. But Keaton said his skin absorbs more oxygen than usual, causing his oxygen levels to be 23% higher than normal levels. Wow. Wow. Um, and this boost of Sheet. oxygen causes a few other symptoms, Keaton said, such as a resting body temperature of 100 degrees, an ability to heal faster from burns, and abnormally smooth oh, cool. skin. Yeah, does and he all- look like a baby? Is he just uh, gorgeous? He does not. He does not. <laughs> <laughs> Not at the least. Not at the least. Um, <laughs> All that can sucking didn't pay off. No. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing though. Like add him to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Get yes. him yes. in there. He uh, is a superhero. Uh, this is huge for him. Uh, and I love it that it's an actual like genetic thing that he has. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. like his skin sucks and like he might have a child that also has. Uh, skin sucking abilities. I hope you know? so. <laughs> I hope he does. If he, yeah. I'm I mean, almost, this poor guy. I'm almost jealous of him. Almost. Um, <laughs> I like that his parents just told him to ignore it. Like the parents yes. clearly knew they had a sticky kid. That kid, <laughs> that kid had some sucky ass skin, and they knew it. And they were like, "Now, baby, you're beautiful. You're good." And then twenty years later, he gets a can stuck on his head for five years, for five minutes. It's crazy. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, Speaking of uh, superpowers, I did want to share this with you guys. And I know Scotty knows this. My husband just got over uh, COVID. He was a breakthrough craze. And and he's doing well today. But, you know, that's great. But the smell and the taste has not fully come back. So that's now like... Yeah. So it's not fully there. And he's an amazing cook. And so there's like... He asked me to taste everything now and, and still can cook. He He's is still... a muralist, right? He yep. paints mur- giant yeah. murals. If you've giant... ever seen giant murals on the side of buildings, Chanelli's husband, Jasper, paints yeah. those. He literally They're flew incredible. to L.A. today to do one downtown in L.A. He'll fly oh, around. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Well, you should let us we'll know, know where it's going to be and we'll snap a pic. Yeah, yeah I will. Um, but That's so cool. He has... He's also the positive type, and he's decided mm-hmm. his superpower is the <laughs> fact that he can't smell anybody's farts. <laughs> <laughs> in New York City, the, losing it's your sense true. of smell in New York City is an it's, incredible superpower. Especially in August. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And that's how we, because I'll just, I forget. And I'm like, oh my God. And he goes, you yeah. forget. I have a superpower. I mean, you know, yeah. My first uh, week in New York City was in August in 2004, and I was uh, in a little acting conservatory thing called Michael Howard Studios, and uh-huh. I was young, and I was broke, and I was around all these really nice young people, and I took a walk. I I wanted to like get to know Manhattan, and I'm walking through East Village, I'm walking through Greenwich Village. It's probably midnight. It's 100 degrees and humid. But I was like, this is it. I've made it to New York. I'm yeah. going to become something. This It was very intimidating, but I was like, I, I'm get used to this city because you're going to stay here. And I round the corner, and in New York, for those who have never been. This is, it's so insane. They just put piles of trash bags out for the – so just piles and piles of trash bags in every direction. And in August at night, you hear the rats in them. So you always kind of take – you use them as – like you just throw your trash – like, if you have a napkin that you've used, you just throw it on the pile of trash bags as yeah. if that's normal. As if that's like, yeah, if there's a trash bag, it becomes a trash can. And <laughs> that's just like a pile of yes. trash. It if just there, naturally yeah. starts adding up. People are like, yeah, this is where you put the stuff. Because, yep. because it's a it. city of 11 million and people. Dogs. And they never thought, like, maybe we should have a system <laughs> for where the trash goes. Instead of just like, no, we throw it on the sidewalk. <laughs> Somebody will get it one day. 
<laughs> so I'm a walk in. I'm having those sort of new, new young person romantic in a new city vibes where I'm like, this is my city. Watch out, world. Scotty Banana Boy number two is coming through. And I look to that pile of trash, and there's a fully nude man sleeping on top of it. And I look at him and go, oh, my God. He goes, no. go away. <laughs> Just looked right at me, skinny guy, little guy, go away. <laughs> so that, that was an omen. Now I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> but those are the moments I live for in this city. That Absolutely. is an exact yep. moment. Oh, my God. I love that story. And that just, of course, <laughs> now brings back all the fine memories. Yes. Mm. Um, Your youth, being yeah. a young woman in New York City, it's so <laughs> exciting. I recommend, we've said this on the podcast before, but like, if you have the means and you have any desire, go live in New York City in your 20s. Just go for you five have years. To. Go feel yeah. it out. Go live for three years. If you hate it, you, you know to. you hate it. But you'll be so good at so many unexpected skills. Yes. yes. Every day is an obstacle course that changes, and everybody that you have to face changes every five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> It's a miracle. It's, right. it's a miracle place. It is. Right. It is. And those stories change every day. Just like you just made all these stories rush. I mean, oh, yeah. this, this brings the story of, of Scotty and I walking down the street. Oh, he, when I was he, injured? He was injured. Uh-huh. Where were you? We were in the East Village somewhere talking about a TV show or something. <laughs> And I'll I'll set you up, Chanel. I'll let you tell it. But I was playing soccer that day with a bunch of guys that were the kitchen staff at Two Boots in Brooklyn, and we were played full field soccer. And I just really messed up my left leg, so I was walking with a serious limp. When I saw Chanel, I had a serious limp. <laughs> and as often happens, there are people on the street. There are panhandlers asking for money, and a guy yeah. approached us. And I just, I mean, we were mid conversation. I just looked at him and he was like, hey, you know, he's asking for some money. And I was like, no, 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 sorry. Look, I was like, look, he's limping. And and I was so serious. Like, Scotty looked at me like, that was your response. And I was like, don't you see he's limping? And there was no part of me. I was like, we can't help you. Well, and the looking. guy instantly backed away and kept walking. <laughs> she just pointed out an, an ailment, and the guy was like, oh, sorry, and kept going. And we just kept walking. And I was like, I should just always and I have a limp. It. That's the other part. It's like we're all we're all freaking down. You know, we've got shit going on. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have my own problems. I played soccer. I was in my late 20s playing soccer with a bunch of guys that were whooping my butt. But yeah, he was like, give me some money. And she's like, he's limping. And then the guy's like, whoa, these two have a whole backstory that we don't need to know. Oh, man. I love it. I was flipping through my photos recently, and I remember like one of the last photos I took before I moved out of my studio apartment in Brooklyn mm. um, was a picture that had just been on the door for like one full month, like the door to the building, and it just said no no punctuation whatsoever, just three words in a row, and it just said "super on vacation." <laughs> and I always would see it just like, "Man, super on vacation. <laughs> we are super on vacation." <laughs> That's exactly what I heard. That's it, man. I'm out. I'm super Sorry, bro. Oh, super. dude. Got a drink in my hand. I got my toes in the sand. I am super on vacation. <laughs> Scotty, give us another one. Hey, speaking of vacations, mm-hmm. have you guys ever heard of the Titanic? Did you ever hear about that boat? Oh, I don't, yeah, nope. yeah, yeah. I think so. It was a big boat a long time ago. Mm-mm. So don't mm-hmm. believe it. This was sent in by many, many bananimals, but the first one I saw was Chelsea Field, so thank you for that. This was in the Guardian UK, written by the best in the business, Martin Bellum. He's good, Kurt. Mm-hmm. He's now, the man in the man. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is, it is what he is, so guilty as charged. <laughs> Visitors at the US Titanic Museum injured by a falling iceberg so (laughs) i know it's incredible the curse of the rms titanic has struck again this time not i know not this time not in the middle of the north atlantic but the uh the titanic museum attraction where else in tennessee of course (laughs) of course of course where it was heading 
an ice wall uh, representing the iceberg that caused the, quote, unsinkable, end quote, ship to sink in 1912 collapsed on Monday at the museum in Pigeon Forge. Oh. Um, pretty fascinating. Oh. So, um, yes, I know, Chanel, this was a Tennessee story for you because I you love it. Nashville, Tennessee. So Pigeon in a message Forge. post, where is Pigeon Forge? It's only like 20 minutes outside of Knoxville, so it's east. Oh, it's near Knoxville. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, the message posted on social media, the owners of the Titanic attraction said, quote, our iceberg wall collapsed and three and injured three guests who were taken to the hospital. So pretty serious oh, injuries. Shit. At this time, oh. we do not know the extent of their injuries. Our thoughts and prayers are continue to be with those who are affected, including the first responder. Very nice message. Iceberg Museum. Titanic Museum. Sorry. The iceberg museum was. Museum. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's the iceberg museum now. Iceberg yeah. museum. It's, the, it's the one who's doing the damage, right? Yes. So let me just uh, explain this because it's ha- kind of hard to imagine. So just like what this tipped is. over or something. Yes. So the iceberg exhibit does not currently exist. The affected area has been blocked off for some time being. We anticipate it will take at least four weeks for the iceberg to rebuild. Why? Because the ice wall described as being pre- well described as previously being 15 feet by 28 feet that's huge for ice consisted of <laughs> real ice that what? visitors could touch what it was grown and regrown using a water filtration system whoa so like that's... an ice wall fell on these people oh man first off you got to think <laughs> think about the curator who is just like no check it check this we're going to have a real iceberg <laughs> and then the first day it opens it falls on three people <laughs> and it's like brian we should have never put the money in for this it should have been plastic like i said <laughs> yes yeah, cold plastic <laughs> and i'm just okay who's going to the titanic museum i i've not I, yeah. I have been to Pigeon Forge, and even okay. most, more recently, Dollywood, which is a magnificent we amusement love Dolly park. Mm. Love her. Dream I will guess. say, of all the amusement parks I've been to, and this is why I'm imagining Titanic, mm-hmm. the most uh, robust humans <laughs> mm-hmm. that are not walking in an amusement park, they're all on the little... Uh, sit down. Um, I don't even. It's, it's not a, even a scooter. Are they it's not? Like a, yeah. Are they scooters? I think they call them scooters. Yeah. Okay. I think they call them they're like scooters. I, I guess. Right. They oh, seem yeah. like yeah, they're rascals. Rascals. Mm-hmm. There you mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. So that was the thing that really took me by surprise. I had never seen so many big people on oh, yeah. scooters in amusement park where you're going to ride rides. So. I don't know, like... <laughs> the rides start early. The yeah. rides start they early. They never stop riding, is what yeah. you're saying. They start riding, they never stop. They never stop. They're always yeah. on a ride. And I guess I'm thinking, you know, perhaps at the Titanic Museum, you've got yeah, maybe. a similar yeah. crowd. I mean, <laughs> I, I hadn't... <laughs> did Wait, did the ice, like, so the ice just, like, came off the wall? And, it, like, collapsed. Fell? It, it collapsed. It collapsed onto them. And um, I mean, it, it must people have been really heavy. People in the hospital? Three yeah. in the hospital. Three. Um, the museum <laughs> claims that its huge outdoor replica of the Titanic is the single largest museum attraction anywhere in the world. I don't know if that's true, but that's a great claim. <laughs> Uh, it houses more than 400 artifacts from the actual ship and its passengers. But this is what I'm leading up to. Okay. <laughs> Titanic 2. A replica of the original ship is expected to sail in 2022, tracing the Titanic's route across the Atlantic. What? 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 Did you know about that? No. Wait, that's real? Are we also going to do Hindenburg, too? (laughs) Like, why why are we doing these things? Yeah. Well, that's the question. Mm -hmm. That's the question, Kurt. What the hell are we doing? I don't yeah. <laughs> That's like making a hotel where it's like, it's all the 13th floor. <laughs> well, now you got me. Now I would go to the 13th 13, floor hotel. 13, 13, 13. <laughs> it's at 13, 13, 13th Street. <laughs> it's so I, it's I'm so in such shock, and that's in Tennessee. Okay, so the Titanic Museum's one. The we connected go. story is the Titanic re the reboot of the Relaunching. Titanic so relaunch. I mean, but the complete, thing is, 
Once you've been on the second Titanic once, if you're on that and you go, we made it, we were on the one, it's the replica, we made it, then what? Are you the second boat? Are you the third? Like after you're the first, after that maiden voyage and the history has been made, then it's just a big dumb cruise ship. And I bet they play the movie on one channel on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I also, and, I also yeah. would have, do you, I, for some reason, I'm very much into watching um, uh, boat launch videos on YouTube. I've seen Of them. like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh. like big boats. And they literally like do them in dry dock, and then they like release them, and they like slide down a ramp into the so water. Fun. It's so fun, and I don't know why I find it very uh, calming. Uh, so I watch them a lot. But I would love, 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 like the, like an outtake from a Simpsons cartoon where they just launch the Titanic two into the water, <laughs> and it just tips over and sinks right away. Like that would be amazing. I, I would yeah. love that too. I would love that too. <laughs> a lot of cocktail shrimp. A lot of pizza bar. A lot of things are going to be sailing into the air. 1,500 ooh, more ooh, people. I had down. to ask you. You just used the word pizza. This is mm-hmm. in my head today. Mm-hmm. I'm not a TikToker. But, okay. but I do have friends that are. And then they share this stuff on Instagram. So I am on Instagram. What about this new fad? This Uh-oh. is killing me. The combination Pizza Hut combination taco bell song do you guys know this no i know the song you know the song yeah i know the song it's from back in the day yeah okay so they're doing the song now and what they're doing is the kids are putting (laughs) (laughs) i love the kids i'm at the cop you know i'm at the pizza hut i'm Mm. at the taco bell i'm at the combination taco hut pizza pizza hut taco bell (laughs) either way (laughs) and then what they do is they put over their heads a flag it says mom and it says dad and then it puts the flag of where their mom's from and where their dad is from and then it says me and there's a combo and then you say you and then you do the eyes of your parents and then you the me the combination and then uh-huh. you do the height. It to me though, like this you said, is popular. This seems oh, like I would one hundred percent want to watch this. <laughs> Not are me. you kidding me? I am so interested. You in this. got to see. Mm. I mean, the ones that I've seen are very attractive young men that are doing it. Oh, and sign me up. I yeah, love a I, I, yeah. I'm like okay. Um, but there is that part of, like, I love that, Kurt, you had that attitude. Mine was, this is great, but it's so ridiculous. Like, we are out of our minds. Like, what the hell? I agree. <laughs> We've lost it. Entertainment has lost its shape at this point. <laughs> We're desperately grasping at straws at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty. That's where I'm at. Yes. It's like, what are we doing? Like, we can't, you could not, we cannot come up. With something mm-hmm. crazier than anyone, at, like everybody at the same time is yes. just putting like the <laughs> dumbest things together at one yeah. time yes. and let and just rolling with it. We and, just need <laughs> distractions. We just live in a world where distractions are now a commodity, and com- and we and TikTok does it better than anywhere else. <laughs> so good for them. Good for, good them. for them. Good for them. Oh, but the song uh, won't get, lead my head. Just so you know, it's a while, great song. while we're together, I was at the pizza. I <laughs> <laughs> was a combination of Taco Bell pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I like Taco Hut pizza bell. I like <laughs> pizza bell. I'm trying to remember. The band is, I think, uh, Das Racist, and it's uh, Harry Kondabu's oh, yeah. uh, brother's band. That's oh, a little comedy right. connection. Okay. Well, they're making That's a okay. comeback. They're making money yeah. right now. That's great. Mm-hmm. I'm excited mm-hmm. for that. Do you guys want to hear a teaser before we go out? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do it. All righty. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, why am I old and fat? Man, 37, wakes up thinking he's still in high school after, forget, forget, after forgetting the past 20 years, oh. including that yeah. he was married and had a 10 year old dog. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Right that after so. this break on B- bananas. bananas. If you step to the call, then maybe check the facts, but you better believe it because it ain't fake news. If you step to the call, then maybe check the facts. Nothing stranger than the truth.
And we are back. Yep. Folks. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to, before we get to our fant- back to our fantastic guest, I do want to see yep. on Instagram, got this message. We got banana uh, mail. From the blue machine. Some banana mail. I am a, hey, hey, I am a banana mail. Woot. And I'm one of those delivery people, USPS, who listens to bananas while walking around the city. I changed my career during COVID from 17 years in restaurants to the United States Postal Service, and I'm Great. loving it. Thank you for being in my ear halls, ear holes during all the ups and downs of my career changes. Y'all have also inspired me to create my own podcast about what it's like to be a letter carrier in an effort to not only share our tales of what it's like working at the United States Postal Service and maybe just maybe find a solution on how to save the USPS. I invite both you banana boys to listen if you have time. It is called The Blue Machine Podcast. The Blue Machine and that Podcast. Is from Kayla Hinkley, the host of The Blue Machine Podcast. So go check that out. Ooh, that's, I think that's totally fascinating. <laughs> Such a I'll great story. Yeah. Okay. I got a wow. few little banana mails, too. First and foremost, Woodshop Coffee, Kurt. Yes. Woodshop Coffee in Sonoma Valley. It's Cameron and Sasha. They're woodworkers, but now they have this like crazy passion for coffee. So they sent us not only bags of coffee, which I started this week and is very delicious. Also, they sent us charcuterie boards that they made because they're woodworkers. So they, thank you. The boards are awesome. It's like a perfect, perfect size. It's totally to let true. My child use knives on. <laughs> That's so right. I set them up with two sharp knives and I go take a bath. Wood so thank coffee. you for that. Thank you. East 8th. What does this say? I can't even read my own typing. 8th Street East in Sonoma, California. Go drink some coffee. Go on Saturday. Drink more coffee. Also, the Albuquerque Animal Welfare Department, Kurt, reached out. They need loving adopters for hundreds of pets. If you're looking to add a furry friend to your life or even just foster a new buddy, go to www.cabq.gov slash pets and go find a new buddy. Thank you to the Albuquerque Animal Welfare Department. Good work. Yeah. And last, this is for all three of us. Shanali, you know these people. Shanali and I sat together at these folks' wedding, actually, just two or three years ago. Congratulations to Edmund and Katie on having yeah. a healthy baby girl today. Yeah. Thank God we have more great parents because, let's face it, great parents are literally the only thing that's going to save us <laughs> at this point. <laughs> that's right. So yeah. Edmund and Katie, congratulations on a healthy baby. Yay. Congrats, and guess guys. what? I love you. Uh, their daughter Eleanor is has was weighed the exact same amount that my daughter Olive did when they were. Ooh. She's gonna be a genius. Yep. Wow. Weight twins. Weight gonna twins. Be a genius. That's Ooh, the best that's news. So good. Yeah. There's a lot of COVID babies that have been born this a year. A lot of quarantine but... babies. Yep. I went to yeah a lot, quite a lot. And I, uh, as you said, Katie and Edmund will be amazing parents, and the ones that I know that have had kids, oh, are yeah. going to be amazing parents. And you're oh, right. Yeah. I can't say it enough. They're going to save us. You, you're yeah. included, Kurt. Thank oh, yeah. You. <laughs> and my kids are going to ruin it all. Olive everybody. will save us. Gus, yeah, yeah. Gus got to keep an eye on that Gus one. will be like p- mid-pushing like the TNT, like the cartoon TNT thing down. And I'll be like, no! And it will be like, I'm that sorry! Boom! Boom! <laughs> Gus will be behind the ice wall at the Titanic Museum. <laughs> Just with a blowtorch, heating it up a little bit in key places. <laughs> a little parody. Uh, all right. Do you guys want to hear about this amazing I do. story? This, yes, I have to hear Mind about boggling. it. Mind boggling. Mm-hmm. So this was sent in by Paul Bosco on Instagram. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Paul. Oh. Um, this was uh, this appeared in the DailyMail.co.uk. It also uh, Seems real. appeared in TexasToday.com, but I literally <laughs> tried to read it, and it was just like word salad. Yeah, worst of uh, the biz. The worst of the biz. So uh, I didn't. I you know I don't love reading from the Daily Mail, but we uh, hate it. I even. will. Uh, <laughs> we don't like him at all. We don't. We love it. We love it because we get we, so many of our stories. With true. That. This was written by Georgia Simcox uh, mm. for Mail Online. Here's the here's the She's article. She's damn good. A father woke up one morning thinking it was the 1990s after wow. losing 20 years of memories, including his marriage and daughter, because of a rare brain condition. Wow. Daniel Porter, 36, from. 
Granberry, Texas. Whoa, uh, I love that it's Granberry. Yeah. So close to Granberry. Nope, they hate those. Granberry. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's confusing. Woke up next to his wife, Ruth, 37, in July last year with no idea who she was or where he was. Oh. The hearing specialist thought he was 16 and it was time to get ready for school, and he had no memory of his wife wow. lying next to him or their daughter living oh. was 10. Ruth had to convince Daniel that he hadn't been kidnapped and that she was his wife, but only with the help of his parents. He even became angry when he first looked in the mirror, asking why he was old and fat. Oh, well, that's no. on him. The fat part's on him, honestly. <laughs> uh, that's all you, bud. You got to you know, balls in your court. <laughs> But come on, there's no 36 and 16. At 16, you have like, you're just like a wiry little thing. That's true. Uh, doctors diagnosed that he was suffering transient global amnesia. I mean, classic. What just the Transient heck? global amnesia. That is like, that is the soaps, right? They yes. always say transient global amnesia, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> which is usually a sudden temporary interruption of short term memory. Okay. And that it would be back to normal within 24 hours. But a year on, his memory, his life remains a blank. Um, this is terrifying. Yeah, yeah this is scary. terrifying. Or um, inspiring. I mean, or inspiring. He gets to fall in love with his family all over again. <laughs> he can exactly. find everything's a new hobby. And think of all the books he gets to reread and enjoy for the first time. I think this is a win for this guy. He, she, his wife <laughs> does say that he's very enthusiastic about life now. See, um, really? Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's fascinating. Here, I'll keep reading. He's, um, oh, what is this? God. He's the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are good. I mean, like, imagine that. Just be like, oh, man, you, break, you're going to love Breaking Bad. You got a lot of stuff. <laughs> you got a real treat ahead of you. It's a golden age of TV. We got to find the positive on this one. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Um, Ruth said he woke up one morning and just had no idea who I was or where he was. He was very confused. I could tell he didn't recognize the room. He thought he was either drunk and gone home with a woman or that he'd been kidnapped. I could see him looking for an escape route. Daniel remembered a WWE program, and when Ruth researched when it was aired, she worked out that it was in the 90s. Wow. She helped him get dressed, and he thought that she was putting him into her husband's clothes, who he thought was going to come home any minute. Oh um, and it just so Scandalous. happened that they were staying on the a ranch of his parents, so his parents were there. He recognized his parents. He was able to like be talked into believing wow. that this was true. Um Feel bad for the kids. Yeah. No, right? Yeah. I'm speechless. I cannot. I'm, right? I mean, if you go back right now, all of us. Until we were 16. 16. Yeah. I, I mean, there are definitely like high points, such as drinking your first beer. Tastes uh, great. Mom and dad, if you're hit listening, I, w- I was not 16, but I was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was too. <laughs> My first but, year? I think I was 12. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's more like yeah. it. That's more like it. I was older. <laughs> You're mature. First rock shows. I mean, everything. Mm-hmm. There yeah. are yeah. wonderful things, but they're also the most, there are some awful things. So he's still got it, Kurt, right? Well, he's this still... is what's interesting about it is that um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it, it's very long and complicated, but apparently he – so the, they best basically had moved back home to live with on his parents' farm because he had lost his job because he started having these weird um, epileptic fits. I see. There um, it is. There and, it is. Uh, and they're not, not epilepsy, sorry. They were stress-induced seizures uh, oh. in January. Oh, but um, – and it, they, they caused him to, like, slip a disc in his back and stuff like oh, this. And the seizures kept getting more and more violent. So the theory is that the brain, in order to protect itself, kind of did a rewind. Oh, boy. And now he no longer has the seizures. So Whoa. this thing that was, like, ruining his life is also now gone. Okay. So that's also been forgotten yeah. as well. And the wife says, um, it's really strange, but his sense of humor is still good. Love He's that. more friendly and social. He Great. loves going out, but he didn't used to. <laughs> so, um, I'm telling you, it's a win. So it's we have to win. see both sides. We got sides. a lot of wins. 
It's a nightmare, and also, like, that is... Can you imagine just waking up and being 16 again? That it is sounds just... like Wifey is definitely down with the 16-year-old yeah. version. Mm-hmm. From what? <laughs> I <laughs> hope. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> also, Man, I don't even understand a... how this is a story. Do you know what I mean? Like, where, how did it, people yeah. find out about it, you know? He's right. 16. He's running around town bragging about it. He's on his <laughs> huffy. He's pedaling through town. <laughs> Being like, I had sex last night. <laughs> it was amazing. Then we listen to this new act, Rihanna. She's so good. She has an umbrella. Uh, well, we That's wish cool. him the best of luck. What's yeah. his name Family. again? I want to write him a letter. I feel yes. like. Let's write him a letter. I wanna, let's I mean, do that. I feel like this we need is to... it. Daniel Porter. It's confusing okay. even more, Shanali. It's confusing <laughs> even more. Hi, we don't know you. We have a podcast, and we were making fun of you. <laughs> Hope you're doing better. Glad the seizures are done. The Banana Boys and Shanali. <laughs> oh, boy. That's crazy. I mean, besides, like, browning out or blacking out drinking, I've never had a concussion. I've never, I've never time-traveled in that way. So I can't imagine how disorienting would be to lose 20 years. Yeah, it is. I mean, from the only time I've really done that, which was that time that we talked about on the yeah. podcast a long time ago, where it was in New Orleans, where I like naked came in the to, W. I was naked on in the in the lobby or not the lobby, but on the, <laughs> the fifth, fifth floor, floor. Yeah. of the W Hotel. Suddenly, um, <laughs> that was amazing. But but the thing Kurt, is, is that from that, that moment, <laughs> yes, from that moment, you you're still you that's the crazy part like without right. your memories you still operate the way you would operate which mm-hmm. is the weirdest part yeah um and i've well, i've heard that people who have like the thing where they they can't remember after a certain period like they have like a two minute long memory or something is that when the two minutes resets they always ask the exact same question oh no that's uh, hell that would yeah. be worse I'd rather get yeah. the full reset and move forward. I have had, I've lived enough places and traveled enough that I would say maybe 10 times in my life, I've woken up in a dark room and I don't remember what city or state uh-huh. or sometimes it'll be like, am I in my college? Do, like, is it like, it takes me a second in that lucid state, but in way, like just before true wakefulness. And I'll say, I don't know where I am. And I'll like reach out and I'll feel a wall or a pillow or whatever. It, and I'm like, oh, right. I'm here shooting this or whatever uh-huh. that mm-hmm. has happened. I, and it's very weird for about 20 seconds. Wow. Yeah. That, no, I've, I've experienced I, that, especially first night in a hotel room where yes. you're just like walk into the wall, Ooh. trying to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and now <laughs> I can take a turn for some sadder stories, but I have had friends who have grandparents or parents with Alzheimer's sure. and it sounds yeah. very similar to those experiences because they'll, yeah. they'll have a conversation with you and then start that same exact conversation oh, yeah. over with you, you know, an hour later, which is oh, yeah. so, I mean, I again, girlfriend that did that too, when she was drunk, she would just tell me the same thing and laugh at the same joke at the same moment, four or five times on the F train ride home. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you, that's the sixth time you've said this. And you've gone five stars. yeah, no, I mean, it's my, it's my entire life with a four year old. Yes. Uh, <laughs> There you go. I got it. I got one for you. The All right, cycle give us. of life. Oh uh, yeah, that's it is. It is. <laughs> it really is. All right. So we've all been on first dates, right? Chanel, you've been on some first dates oh. in your life. Oh, they yeah. always go exactly according to plan and you end up marrying the person. That's how first dates work. <laughs> always. Every first date ends in a marriage and everlasting love. Well, this poor woman, she really had a good one. This is from Unilad UK, but I found it everywhere, too. Written by maybe the most British-sounding name of all time, Poppy Bilderbeck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy Bilderbeck. You are... Poppy Bilderbeck in Shropshire. Oh. Amazing. She is so good. Sent in by one of our very best, Aaron Erdman. Thank you, Aaron. Woman horrified after man brings late mother's ashes to their first date. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. Yes. After matching on Tinder, a woman was left horrified after the guy she met for the first date brought his late mother's ashes along with him. The woman has shared her story now anonymously. Uh, She invited her Tinder match to a barbecue at her house. But ashes aren't the only reason she regrets swiping swiftly left. Nice work, Poppy. (laughs) The date started out with the man arriving to the barbecue late. 
always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Admitting I, to, I hope, I hope he comes in and just declares, "My mom wanted to be scattered <laughs> on an awkward date. She loved awkward first dates, and so I'm scattering here on this date with you." <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> I wish that, too. <laughs> but he did something somehow weirder, Kurt. No, no. Oh, no. He arrives to the barbecue late, admits to the woman that he drove around her house several times, nearly deciding to just go home. The woman then went on to say that uh, how the man only spoke about himself, talking nonstop about all of his family drama. So Classic man. Yep. Classic, classic man. Classic, oh, classic man. Absolutely, Kurt. Thank you. A friend of mine went on a date with Keith Olbermann once, and she said that he just talked about himself for two hours, and then they Ugh. left, and that was Ugh. it. And I was like, boy, Ugh. that must have been a real Ugh. bowl of soup. Um, if that wasn't bad enough, and this might be the thing that is the weirdest to me. The man also brought all of his own food to the barbecue and wasn't willing, <laughs> wasn't willing to share it with anyone. <laughs> He was willing to share a look at his mother's ashes, which uh, he had brought along in a vial. The woman uh, says, "At they sat down, <laughs> I'd be mean, it's vial. so insane." The man, uh, the woman says that as they sat down, the man pulled the vial out of his pocket. He noticed her staring at it, and uh, she was quote flipping between if he was about to snort something strange or had <laughs> built some sand art. <laughs> <laughs> The nineties were big. She just named she she outed her age a little bit. Sand art was huge in the nineties. Uh, she went then went into detail how he told her, Oh, it's all super casual. I'd like to introduce you to my mother. The woman yeah. said she did not know what to do, whether to laugh or cry or run. Uh. The answer is run. run. Um, this is Norman Bates behavior. Burn your house down and run. He knows where you live. Grab a turkey leg off the smoker and run for the hills. <laughs> the man went on to explain this was not the first time his mother had joined him on such a special occasion. And then he brings a vial of her ashes to any important event. So don't feel special, honey. <laughs> not only. Last week I brought her to Great Adventure. <laughs> We rode the twister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Not only were the ashes in that vial, but the man also had his late mother in a necklace and a ring and a half sleeve <laughs> tattoo dedicated to her. Shut, <laughs> shut <laughs> up. I, look, oh. guys, I love my dead mom. I love my dead mom. You could read her ashes guy, right now. I, literally, I'm looking at her ashes from where I'm speaking. Yes. But wearing them in multiple places on your body at all times <laughs> no oh, sir boy. that gets a no sir no that the three of us if we met this man <laughs> at a party all three of us would be right there with him and yes. we would have the best time yes it, like that's the guy you're right the, all three of us specifically are the and three Carl. humans yeah, and Carl, that'd be like, yeah. okay, what's up with this guy? Let's we gotta we have to know him and know what's going on. I agree and we with would, that completely. And we would be entertained to no end and ask him about every vial. Like I am so entertained by this story. It's so good. And, and it, <laughs> it has it has a pretty good ending too. Okay. I'll, I'll oh, okay. Ending. oh, okay. So, so he has the, the ring, the necklace, the vial, and a half sleeve tattoo dedicated to her. She went on to say how after her date finished the burger he brought. Uh, she made an excuse, like any smart woman would do, and said she had to finish some work. Alas! Thank you, Poppy. Despite her attempt to put him off, the man texted her before he even got a chance to get into his car. And the text read, quote, My mother really liked you. I can't <laughs> wait to see you again. I love him! I love him! No, 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 no. <laughs> Wow. 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 That is, he is literally trying to start his own horror movie. Yes. He's like trying to. Oh, <laughs> by any yeah. means necessary. So I went on a great first date once through MySpace. So this was back in the two thousand mid 2000s. And it was a great date. And her picture didn't match. Her picture was either the greatest photo of her ever taken in the known universe, or she used somebody else's photo. But when I arrived to Mustang <laughs> Harry's or Sally's, one of those bars up there, because I was temping up there, she was great. She was lovely. She was funny. She was cute. It was like a really good first date. And it, because it was an internet dating, this was like the birth of that. 
we were feeling each other out, you know, normal. We met in a public space, a brightly lit bar. But it was good. So I asked her on a second date after a couple of beers, and she said, great. And we agreed to go see The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Mm-hmm. You know, a fun, good date movie if you're yep. living in New York. Yep. So we meet in Brooklyn. Um, this is probably like four or five days later. And I had enough time where I was like, oh, she's cool. I think, like, this is good. I'm excited to go on this second date. So we go. And shows up. Same person shows up, thank God. And everything's going normal. And I buy tickets. And I was like, do you want popcorn or anything? She was like, I would love popcorn. She's like, do you want to get a big one? And I was like, sure. So we get a big popcorn, um, and we sit down, and the, we're talking over the trailers. And while we're talking before the movie starts, she sticks her tip of her tongue down and picks up a piece of popcorn and swallows it. So I so just head down, head goes down just, to yeah, the popcorn. Popcorn comes up a little bit to oh, her chest. She's holding there, it. Yeah. And then she just I know tips that. her head down. So I'm like, so your brothers, they uh, they enjoy racquetball, is that right? And they, you know, she sticks her tongue down and just pulls it. She's like, yeah. And so I'm like, well, this is this is about to be something. So she does it again, and she does it again. And so the movie starts, and she's like, do you want any popcorn? I'm like, not yet. I ate five days ago. I'm fine. Uh, so. Where what and out of the corner of my eye as the movie's starting, I'm watching her just repeatedly only using her tongue to eat one piece of popcorn yeah. at a time. So, so wait a second, this is so crazy to yeah. both of you. This, this is, is so crazy. This is the way you eat popcorn. This is but in your s- own personal. When you have your own personal popcorn, this is how you eat popcorn. Yeah. Not me. Um, it's the, it, your hands don't get oily. You just oh, sit there. I see. Okay, so just you might have gone like on date number bird. three. You might have married. Wait, her. wait, wait, wait! <laughs> yeah. Never heard of this. Never heard of this. N- no. So Never. I then my mind starts to go. I had two main thoughts, and the, I don't know the first act of uh-huh. Life Aquatic because I was so focused on this. <laughs> What's going to happen when it goes too deep for her tongue? That was my first thought. <laughs> Is she going to just, like, feedback it and, like, stick it? Is she going to dump it? Is she going to use her hands, right? Like, I'm like, does she use a napkin? I'm, does I'm she like, pull out a funnel from her pocket, <laughs> stick it down her throat, and just dump the whole thing in? So, does she so have an happened? extendable tongue? She did what I would say is the weirdest option. <laughs> what, what, what? She just stopped eating popcorn when it got out of reach and put the whole tub under the chair and just did not eat for the rest of the movie. So she got to the tongue line. She got just deep enough and then was like nope i'm good maybe it's a weird diet maybe it was a weird diet fad that she was on but she, she doesn't want to test the popcorn this is what nope. Kurt, which i didn't think about but that's the weirdest thing i've ever i one of yeah. them i mean it weirded me out mid-conversation to see a new friend's <laughs> tongue go down it's a strange move on a shared popcorn it's Very a strange, strange move on a yes. shared popcorn yes. you know what maybe maybe in her mind she was like, it's kind of sexy. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I was like, thinking. Maybe she was just like, look, look at this, huh? Watch I bet my this tongue. guy's ding dong's as big as a with my tongue. piece of <laughs> corn kernel. <laughs> oh, yeah. And no I was classic. like, and it went the other way. It made me go, well, this was a nice one date in 15 minutes. So <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this movie. You never, ever were able to ask her about eating the popcorn with the tongue? No, that was our last date. We didn't, we didn't, uh, I don't remember I even kissing or anything like that. I think it was kind of like, oh, that was great. Um, see you on MySpace. And then just <laughs> didn't, ran to the F train. Yeah. <laughs> it was so jarring because it was so small. And that's why I said when the guy brought his own food, that alone would have, unless he, unless ahead of time you have some dietary thing, or you're vegan or something and you're like, hey, you know, I, sorry. Like, there's an explanation but if not if you're just like no i just bring my own food to restaurants and <laughs> cook out that to me is such a red flag <laughs> it's, a, it's so weird cut oh, to man. the next the next woman in your life that sticks her tongue in the in the popcorn yes and that i'll just that... scream why why damn it why that's what i'll just scream <laughs> your hands don't, i'm telling that's you your be hands don't get oily that way See, Kurt's really... really telling us something you and i didn't know I'm scotty yeah. I, and it's I, like it's you, you know I've it never... feels good like you're a little anteater you know it's like a, look at the anteater got to go to see a movie uh, <laughs> <laughs> if she had said that maybe i would have married her she blew it she played it too coyly <laughs> all right cool. should i tease us out of here with one tease us out for yeah, the yeah. next episode i want to hear the matrix code came from sushi recipes 
<laughs> the Matrix <laughs> which... code came from sushi recipes. Yes. So the reigning code on the computer uh-huh. was spicy yes. tuna. Yeah, they don't actually know which uh, recipe it was because the guy will never reveal it. Um, but it had been like that design had been gone through like multiple different uh, animation houses. And the Wachowski uh, siblings si- were like, yeah, we siblings, don't, we're not yeah. down with it. And so then finally an- another guy tried it and he, he took his wife's. Uh, his wife was Japanese, and he took her recipe book and scanned scanned it in, and then paint hand painted it all. Um, and but Holy he'll never Toledo. reveal what the recipe, like what sushi recipe, it actually was originally. Uh, well. But all of that is just sushi. <laughs> Which is so funny. It's well. so good. Yeah, I'm gonna have sushi tonight think, because of that story. I'm and gonna I do. Go I the think sugar that fish. one was uh, sent in by Copy Hayes. Were, uh, were you Hayes. guys alive when? Uh, the trend was, as a teenage kid, to wear Japanese. Like, you had no idea what it said. I mean, I guess the reverse. I remember is, it. I remember, remember the tattoos. It. I remember Asian symbol tattoos and letter tattoos a lot. It's so the funny now. Also, the you know, the reverse. Like, there are people in Japan wearing words and phrases mm-hmm. that me, don't make any sense. Oh, yeah. But the idea that we were just, like, thought it was cool because it was in right. Japanese lettering. Right. We have no idea what it said. It's just a, it's a language. That's all. Yeah, yeah. relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> Let me relax. Stop trying to be interesting. Right. You're a dork from so the cool. suburbs. <laughs> yeah. oh. So, Shanali, is there anything you want to plug before plug. we go? Uh, plug, plug, I will, plug. Thank you so much for bringing up the podcast. That's the thing that's the, the monthly thing. We don't even know. And it's very much in the same vein of hanging with awesome people. Yes. And celebrating their work. So we like we will go down into some holes as to where and how they decided to do what they do. But um, for the most part, it's being silly and having a good time with people that do everything and not just comedy and not just music. Well, that's you. The multi hyphen extraordinary. Yeah. Scientist, my my personal trainer, you know, Kenny the (laughs) Bowery Ballroom sound man. Yeah, literally. If we could have met this dude that had the vials, you know, mm-hmm. of his mom's ashes, I would have loved to have a conversation with him. Oh, I bet him. he'd want to meet you, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it is called We Don't Even Know, and precisely because we don't, we don't know. We have no clue. We just it's a, go with the flow. It's a true variety sketch, comedy conversation. That's yep. awesome. And Tigers and Monkeys, they and can Tigers find your music Monkeys. and download it. Yes. I'm writing new music, but right now we've got albums on the web on uh, Bandcamp. Hey, check it out. There you go. Help an independent That's... musician out. You know. That's right. Yeah. Say hey to Jason <laughs> for me. Yeah. I will. I will. Thanks, Jason. Shanali. Thank you so much. Shanali. We'll love you guys. Love you Thanks back. so much for having me. Bananas. bananas. Give us a banana, Shanali. Give us a banana, Shanali. That was a good one. (laughs) This has been an Exactly Right production. Produced and engineered by Katie Levine. Theme music by Kahan. And all of our artwork is done by Travis Millard. You can follow us on Instagram at The Bananas Podcast, where we post stories every day and things that we don't cover on the podcast. Listen, subscribe, and please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. And if you're interested in advertising on Bananas, please email us at thebananaspodcast at gmail.com. That's thebananaspodcast at gmail.com.